Hey, this is Tom, and I want to talk to you about the 56,000 reasons to own a Tesla share in 2021. Now, Tesla just reported 56,000 vehicles sold in China in the month of September alone. Now, that's a 27% increase just from August. They sold 44K in August. They're up 27% in a month. Uh, Gordon, if, if you weren't an analyst, if you were running a hedge fund, you would have been broke so long ago. From Tesla, you would have been trying to cover your shorts so long ago and, and borrowing money and losing billions of dollars that you wouldn't even be on probably. But you're not. You're an analyst. So I think that puts to bed the whole false narrative, the whole FUD about the China market share shrinking, about Tesla losing ground in China. This is RIP for this argument. It was moronic to begin with, but at this point, nobody takes it seriously. And I feel bad for Gordon Johnson. The man is running out of countries. He started with Norway, then Tesla broke records in Norway, then he said Germany, then he said China. In every country he ever said Tesla is losing ground, Tesla just remained silent and just broke records to shut this motherfucker up. And you, you make the case, you've been making the case for six or 700 points. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. I mean, it's kind of uh, like a basketball player getting taunted, just coming out and dunking on somebody just to shut him up. This is as bad as it gets for Gordon. I honestly don't know what his next move is going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be Umfufu Motors from Botswana, or maybe he needs to find a country with no Tesla sales at all. Listen, they are not production constrained. That's a major misconception. Their capacity as of last quarter was about 840,000 cars. They sold 499,000.55 cars this, uh, uh, for the full year. So they're not selling out their capacity, and they're losing significant share in Europe and China, again, despite the price cuts. So you can make an argument about Tesla having a zero market share. At this point, I don't think him seriously. I think he's very entertaining. I think he used to be a decent analyst, but I think at this point, he is on this crusade agenda. It's his Moby Dick, I guess. Uh, don't really care. Not my problem. In this video, I want to answer a simple question because this is going to be the debate that you're going to be hearing in the next few days. Is this new record priced in into the current share price of about 790? Because the fudsters are going to basically say, well, we know Tesla just broke these records, which we literally said they will not break a couple of days ago, but now they broke them. But instead of admitting our mistake, we're going to make an argument that now the share price already reflects that. So Tesla is still not a buy. The same people that were chirping that Tesla is losing ground in China will now tell you, well, they broke the record, but it's already priced in. You shouldn't buy Tesla. It's not a good investment. So they'll find a new way to hate in Tesla. And at this point, you shouldn't care. And I don't care either. The only question is, do I think they're right or wrong objectively? And in my videos, you always get the bottom line first. I don't ask you to click nothing, not smashing nothing, not buying nothing. I have no coupons expiring, no courses. So here's the bottom line first. I don't think this latest success is priced in into the current stock price. With this stock price, the 790, almost 800, we have a lot of China FUD, a lot of China negativity priced in because people started to take these arguments seriously that Tesla is losing ground in China. And I think the current share price reflects that a lot more than the new records being broke. Beyond the fact that you have to understand that Tesla is a $1,500 stock. I've been adamant about this for a long time. Look at what's going on in the auto industry right now. Add energy, add engineering, add their battery developments, add FSD, add the infrastructure, add the synergies with SpaceX and the other stuff he's doing with Neuralink. All of that just basically comes up to one score, $1,500 in my opinion. But again, not a financial advisor, just a guy on the internet with an opinion. Might be inaccurate, might be wrong, might be the ramblings of a madman. You do your research. I did mine. I came up with $1,500. And at this point, that's all I got to say about it. I'm not about to make a 15-minute video just for money and ads to keep you on for something that takes literally three minutes. You guys are out. Just before you go, give a huge shout out in the comments to our channel members and patrons who allow me by their support to make these shorter videos and not go for the ad revenue of the 10-minute video. These guys are responsible for you getting this condensed content and me not giving a fuck. Simple. See you tomorrow.